Okay, all right, well, I'm Rick. 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 So we don't have any really thing prepared here, so we're just gonna go off the top of our heads. But first of all, I wanna say thank you to all of you who poured out your, your love for this trip, because in, in a matter of 72 hours, this is the first miracle, by the way. There's seven miracles I'm gonna talk about today as we go through this. I'm gonna to try to talk about them all. But the first one was the fact that we got enough supplies, enough things to go down there to fill up a 26-foot Bob truck in 70, less than 72 hours. It's because of Larry's leadership that they got all that going. What a, not only did we take down a bunch of supplies, we took a, some, some gift cards and things like that. So we're very blessed by you guys in a short amount of time to do that. So thank you very much. So that was the first one. So I'm going to kind of go through these slides. You guys can interject anytime you want. Uh, the guys that went on the trip were Carrie, Larry, and David. David. David's in the back. Yeah, I so want to. I want to. Yeah, David. I want to give a positional thing on that. This is exactly what happened in the trip. Rick was like leading and doing, doing some great stuff. Carrie was always like thinking ahead, so he's like standing next to the equipment there. You see how that worked? That was the whole time. And Dave's always in the back. Always supporting, always helping. If something was to be lifted, loaded, moved, he was, he was always doing that. Uh, on Wednesday night, we, we got the truck at 9 o'clock on Thursday morning and then loaded it up in five, five different locations on, on Thursday. At Wednesday night at 4 o'clock, we had no truck and barely any supplies. And we had, it was just asking questions and it's not about, it, it's about just one thing, you, I, my last name is West, it rhymes with Pest. All I did was just keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. And when I kept asking, you guys kept giving and kept loving. And one of the great things about this that maybe we'll get to it is driving down to Fulton where I hit. And as you're driving down 35 and 37, truck after truck after car after car after trailer after trailer loaded down with, can we go help people? Wow. And that's the massive thing about, I don't want suffering in our world, but the response that people give response that you gave uh, made a huge difference. So, uh, so, so um, I didn't, in my circumstance, I was in Boston on business all yeah. week long. And and I just kept thinking, I see these emails from, from Larry and from everyone else about doing this. So I offered up my trailer at home. I got a five by eight trailer to take because at this time, Larry was just gonna go down there with a pickup and a, a trailer at one point in time, just a little trailer. And so I offered that up. We kept going back and forth and I saw it growing. And so in Boston, it was coming back Thursday and I I, uh, I asked my boss, Michelle, if I could go on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I felt compelled to go. I mean, it's Labor Day weekend and it's, you know, we, I should spend time with the family, but I, I just said, you know, can I, can I go on this? And so, of course you can go on this. So, that that was mine. Then these guys. That was American. Carrie White. That was American. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, Carrie, why did you go? What happened with you? Well, first off, you have to understand that my family just went through the Baton Rouge floods a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. Um, I saw the, the outpouring of help. I, mean, I made two trips down to Baton Rouge to, to try to help out family. So that was part of, of what was, was was driving me. I too had to check with my boss <laughs> before I, I went. <laughs> Um, because it was a, a weekend, it was a holiday weekend, and, and, and I had a lot of things going on. My September is, is going to be very busy, um, but I felt compelled that, that you know, we needed to, to, to go help, um, and so that's why I, I chose. David, how about you? Well, I was wanting to We 
really didn't have any accommodation. We'll get into that as we go. But, but so let's let's move on. This is this is us at the last uh, right before we left Fort Worth with our supplies. I think this is the police station. So um, I don't know what to put on there. So I got to click. Uh, these are guys that helped load the truck. There was many others. There was women as well that helped. Uh, but we just uh, this was out in the parking lot at, at Market Street. Um, and we were just picking up supplies, whoever came by. Many people that from the parish obviously filled us up, but also folks just driving up saw what we were doing and just handed out cash or handed out a bottle of water or whatever it was. It was unbelievably awesome with that little bitty sign that got people there. I wish we had a bigger sign. We would have filled that thing up to the rim, but it was pretty full as we left. Six locations told us no. We couldn't park it up. And Dunkin' Donuts said yes. Not Market Street. Dunkin yeah, that's Donuts. right. So we were in front of Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Donuts. So they brought out. I'm a big fan of Dunkin'. They brought Man. out some drinks for us. Manager McAllister's walking with two gallons of iced tea sauce. Where he says, "Here, you need this." And he has two gallons of iced tea and a bag of ice. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another location that Larry picked up stuff from another group. Keller Chamber of Commerce. That's Felix Mirror on the left. Frank Locks. Some other people. So they they started us off. They already had some supplies and didn't have a way to get it down there, and up pulls the truck. <laughs> this looks like another group. This is my company, uh, so my company contributed some stuff. They got together, so everybody wanted to make sure that they uh, uh, got a little fix. So that's on my company's Facebook. Uh, that's my little one helping out. That's a little right. Bit. We put in the huge helper loading the. I wish I would have had him down in, in the corpus area because he would have climbed up into the truck to, yeah, to, to get that. the stuff. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> We would stop somewhere if somebody needed baby wipes. We'd have to go find the baby wipe or whatever because it, it wasn't very organized, as you can see. My uh, loading ability wasn't that great. But um, <laughs> this is another location. I, I'm not sure where that's this a, that's, is. A, that's the that's the chamber, chamber of commerce. Okay. Help, great help. And then this is this was right before we left in uh, Fort Worth. This is the Fort Worth Police Department helping with the supplies they they got in a short amount of time. Can, can I? Can no, I tell something yeah, about this? This guy right here is named Doyle Gilbert, by the way. Uh, police Officer of the Year in Texas just got announced. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, uh, police officer. Nice. So, he is, uh, I call him, I'm just trying to talk to him there. So, he's calling down to Fulton, which is where the eye hit. So, if you go from Corpus through Portland to Rockport to Fulton and then over to a place called um, Holiday Beach, he calls down to Fulton, he calls the sheriff, he calls places. And as we're going down there trying to find stuff and where to go, he said, um, I know I know it's shut down, there's nothing in the town open. I said, how do you know? He says, because I called the Cracker Girl, I called the, the uh, Dairy Queen, <laughs> Dairy Queen, and it's not open. And she, Dairy Queen doesn't answer, nothing in a small town. <laughs> so we're driving down, we don't have gas. You remember, there's no gas, and you can't. And we had diesel and gas, we had two vehicles. And so we got the idea, he just called two hours ahead to the Dairy Queen, say, hey, are you guys open? Yeah, we're open. Is there a gas station around you? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody pumping gas at the gas station? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you you want to know in, in Texas, you want to know where gas is, you want to know what's going on in a small town, call the Dairy Queen. <laughs> Never would have thought about that without Officer Gilbert. It's great. So they helped us load up and then yeah. they also escorted us out of there. To the freeway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Officer Doyle took us through the, the easiest way to get out because we were you know, we're kind of on a, in a hurry to get out, but he, he took us out all, all the way through, had his lights on when we were on 35. Code <laughs> <laughs> <Hope> 3. <laughs> so here it is, this big yellow truck. The, the big yellow dog. The big so yellow thanks dog. thanks to Peter Sakovich who donated uh, CBs, which made the trip incredibly fun because it was the big yellow dog in front, and then it was an expedition with a, a trailer with nine tanks of five gallons worth of gas on the back. So we were the big yellow dog in the big truck, and they were men with gas. But <laughs> they, they, changed, they, changed their, they changed their handle to gas men, so it was like, <laughs> break, break, break. So we, there's, there was a little bit of top foolery driving down. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, I'm not sure what that is. All right, so before we left, we also got this beautiful prayer from, from our brother Bob Idlefell, and we, we prayed this prayer just about every time we'd take off. And so I re highly recommend this when you travel. It's just a beautiful prayer. And it was exactly what we were doing. Because it says, as you let Abraham 
from home guarding him from all his wanderings, and that's what we were doing, wandering. We had no idea what we were going to do down there. I mean, we had no place to stay, um, which is which is one of the miracles. It with Larry's great. Uh, he knew he knew people who knew people who knew people who could who eventually let us stay in their place down there, and it was because we had no place to stay. We were going to sleep in the truck, or we were going to sleep. At one time we heard there may be a Catholic church down there that was damaged that we could stay there. We couldn't get a hold of them, nobody would answer the phone. So um, again, we were wandering down there and we, and we didn't find a place to stay. Bob Lollifeld gave us that prayer. Yeah, we got, we got <laughs> copies here when it was passed it around. Awesome. Um, so that was our prayer. And this, hey, of course, Bucky. we have to yeah, stop by Bucky's. <laughs> they have gas. Bucky's did have gas on the way, but on the way back, they didn't. Yeah. And every, and I don't know if you've ever been to Bucky's, but there's like 500 gas pumps, yes. and all of them, there was nobody on the gas pump. There's the weirdest yeah. sight we've ever seen. We don't have a picture of them, but it's pretty awesome. Um, so, let's, so we go down there, we really don't know what we're, where we're going. Uh, Larry is talking to, you know, back and forth to Officer Doyle to figure out where we're going to go, where the places where, where we need to be the most, but we had no direction. So we went to the eye of the storm, uh, which was in the Rockport, Fulton area. Right. And we thought, you know, we're just gonna stop at the first place that we think somebody needs something, okay? Um, and just start off loading product or give, you know, whatever we need to do there or help them or whatever. So that I'm part of a prayer group. A lot of you in here are part of the Schoenstatt prayer group where you pray the rosary once a, a, a month or a week with the Shrine of uh, Sharon's staff. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that. So when we're down there, uh, Larry and me are trying to, we're leading the, in the big yellow dog, and we're going, this area kind of looks good. Let's let's start here. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt Rick's story because we're praying to the Holy Spirit to know where to go. And I hear that, I, where's all the damage? You hear on the news, it's all in Houston, right? Corpus isn't all that bad, but the eye hit Fulton. So when I hear that, I think, I just feel like, I have a, a, a feeling, I'm saying Holy Spirit, saying Fulton. Then somebody calls and says, he texts me, says, you ought to go to show and stop. I don't know where show and stop is. We're not using GPS, we're not using, we don't have a maps go. And then somebody else calls me and says, you know, the really hard hit place is Holiday Beach, which is just across the bridge from Fulton. You ought to check that out. Okay, so that's in my mind. So people are planning things in my mind. We get to a certain point, and we're, we're, the whole time we're talking about, let's just let the Holy Spirit guide us, let the Holy Spirit guide us, let the Holy Spirit guide us. We're praying the Holy Spirit guides us to where we're supposed to go. And we get to Fulton, and you were like, let's take a left here, let's go down here. Your rakes just started, I, to me, this is my recollection, started giving rakes, just take a right here, go here. And we take a right, and as we take a right, there's a sign there, and it says, show and stop sisters. And we pull up and the first place that big yellow dog stops is a convent that's on the water that's been devastated by the storm. And when we pull up, we're like, <laughs> you know, like we're just blown away that we, guys, I talk to people, who, who's been down there before? Anybody been down to show and stop? You can't find it. It's almost impossible to find. I mean, people get lost all the time going there with their GPS on. <laughs> And we pull up, and we're just like blown away, we're praising God, we open the doors, and the first thing we hear is laughter. The sisters, in the midst of all of this, look at the smile, they're <laughs> laughing, they're talking to people, they're, they're worried about their neighbors. Like some of the guys go up there, they talk to them, and, and I'm, I'm kind of like third, getting out of the truck. And the first thing the sister says to me, says, can we get you anything to eat? They're trying to take care of us. <laughs> What an incredible blessing. I mean, it's just like uh, unbelievable. I'll let somebody else tell. But that, that was my first hit on the ground was showing Stott and them, them trying to take care of us. Unbelievable. And the odds of that happening, I mean, like, that is unbelievable. The odds of, the, of all the places down there, and there's devastation everywhere. We show up here, and I, I mean, I just almost walked down and cry. I mean, this is like, they need us. And so this is one of the sisters there. Uh, that was showing us around and, and we asked them what we could do for them. They had supplies because people had come by there from, from Catholic charities and things like that, but they needed muscle. They needed people to move stuff around because they're, you can see some of the damage back there. 
their roof was basically, most of it was ripped off of their dorm rooms where they stayed. And so they had to take all their furniture out. All it's their, a full size garage, a two, two, two car garage. Totally collapsed. And this is where they're using the restroom and have a porta potty. So, um, so they they were devastated, but they were they. We I asked I said did, did you did you guys flee the storm or did you stay? And she goes we stayed. I said why'd you stay, sister? She goes I'll take care of us. Like no fear at all. Yeah, they. So their, their water damage was from the roof though, not from the flood. They probably did have a, a foot or two in, the, in their dorm on the bottom floor. But, but, but one of the things to understand is this dorm's at least three stories high. Every floor was wet because the roof was blown off and the water came down. So the carpet on all three floors was wet. It wasn't just the bottom floor that you might think got wet. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, and I'm not sure what pictures you're gonna have as we go through here, but. I went walking through with one of the, the nuns. We were trying to, to, to haul some stuff out of the building and, and so forth. And recognized, you know, how, how, how many belongings does a nun own, right? And one of her comments was that the, these 80-year-old these nuns are having a hard time figuring out what they can keep. They don't have much to keep to begin with, you know, when they're trying to figure it out. I'm going to interject in here too because one of the things that I saw in the floods in Baton Rouge that was going on and it was something the nuns were doing, we send water, we send trash bags, we send lots of things. The plastic totes are important. All your paper boxes get wet, everything's wet, you can't find anything dry. You get things dried up, you want to put them into a plastic tote to keep them dry and, 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 and so forth. It's what we did with my aunt's house down in Baton Rouge is what they were doing. Yeah, so if we did that, if we did this again, we'd probably load up a bunch of really good heavy-duty plastic totes, not the cheap ones, the good ones, because that's what they really needed. But that was one of the things, plus bug spray and stuff. We'll, we'll talk about yeah, that as we go. Um, so this is another shot at, at Schoenstatt, um, their dorms, I believe. You can see some more damage. Um, before we get to these guys, let's go back here. This is the shrine that some of you pray every every month. Awesome. Uh, right here is um, a sister receiving some money from another sister. So uh, this is this sister on the left is Sister Rose. She's from the Saint Therese, Teresa of Calcutta order. She's from India, and she actually knew Mother, Mother Teresa. So I got to talk to her. She's a firecracker. She's re she's really fun. Um, and then the sister on the right is from is from the Schurenstadt, and she's given the money that we gave her at Catholic Charities. At the time, we didn't have the money, but we gave them some money to, to help, just a little money to whatever. Some of the generation generosity from you guys, we were able to give to her. So that's the shrine is actually behind the Schurenstadt shrine. They're, they're, they're yeah, good of it. And then uh, I might have Cheryl say, say a little bit later when we get to it. You, you guys donated two thousand dollars in cash and a thousand dollars in gift cards. In 24 hours, and that's part of the money. Uh, there. All right. So, so um, this is all Friday when we went down. Okay. At seven, there's curfew at seven o'clock. So we had to either get out and or stay with them for the night. And you know, we thought about that, but we had a, a some we had some kind of a plan. We thought because Larry had, had figured out a place where we could stay from a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. So, uh, so we had a place to stay. We heard Larry kept telling us, or you said some guy that you knew from a new whatever had a place in the back of their house. So we thought we, we were going to be yeah. in a. We got some RV. business partners down there and kept getting connected with all these business partners. And this was Grace Point Church, and this guy. So we ended up at this really, really nice air conditioned grate with cots, and it was with football. Okay, so we, we can watch a little football. And, and we had ice cold beverages at that particular point, so after a long day, water. Water bottle. Yeah. Uh, but we did find a place to stay. Yeah. There were what? The Yes. They were flying all over. Mosquito pets. Um, 
mosquitoes were unbelievably bad down there. So if, think about your worst mosquito experience. It's a million times worse than that. <laughs> mosquitoes were, were the biggest mosquitoes I've ever seen and the most I've ever seen. And they just cover you from head to toe, um, even with bug spray on. They kind of like bug spray on. It's like a cocktail. So, it, was, it was the weirdest thing, but somehow we're back. We may all have West Nile, East Nile, every Nile. I don't know. So, um, so these are the guys that we met up with on Saturday morning. Uh, Grace Point Church. Grace Point Church, just a, a non-denominational church. Non church. Uh, they're, they're, they're getting ready to go out and with chainsaws and cut down trees that are all, scattered all over the place. Um, and, and you had some, and Larry's gonna go over that a little bit later, some of that stuff that you did, right? Yeah. Some of the videos. But these guys are just open to us, they, you know, they, Four Catholic guys come down and they're just welcoming us like, like, thanks for coming and thanks for your support. But these guys really, they're probably doing it, they've been doing it probably for weeks now. They're still going out every day to help. Very, very strong. So, um, so Saturday morning we're going to Rockport area or the, uh, what was the place called? Tradewinds. We went to Tradewinds, yeah. So we're trying to find a place that did not get supplies because and we found out there's like five areas that did not get a lot of supplies or a lot of support. Yeah. Can't tie now. Yes. Yeah, we spend it. Remember, we just showed up, showed up at Schoenstatt. When we go to spend the night, we're bedding down for the night, and the guy's talking about something, and he says, "Well, it's kind of interesting because the only person I know that gets up that early is the priest next door." Oh, that's gone. <laughs> so we are at a location where there's a priest next door. And we get up in the morning, we go ask them, we meet the person that's the housekeeper. And the housekeeper goes, oh, well, do you know Catholic Charities and how to get a hold of them? I'll get a hold of them. So she arranges everything for us to drop off later to Catholic Charities. Completely God taken care of. And when we go to Grace Point Church, we're not sure where to go. And this lady says, well, I'd like to go drop off and I've got a place for you to go. Trade winds. And she knows the direction and the location. So and she again, went with us. Again, like the Holy Spirit just, we're not sure what to do. We walk in the door and there's the answer. Every time. Yeah. Yeah, she's all the way in the back of the right. Yeah, I mean she's an angel. <laughs> she was floating in, floated away. We don't know <laughs> she got us to where we needed to be that morning. That's exactly right. So, the, so we're driving around, and the first thing we see in this neighborhood in Trade Winds is the Blessed Virgin statue. So we go, we're in the right place. And, and the damage you'll see in a minute. Some of the keep, damage. Keep it there for a second. Yeah, when we're driving down there, the first time we drive down there, imagine a long road with green grass, with lush trees, plenty of green all the way in. You don't notice telephone poles, but telephone poles, right? Now take all of the leaves off of every tree. Every leaf. There's Live oaks leaf. with zero leaves on them. Now, went downward side, a little clump of leaves. In other words, the wind was coming from the ocean this way. There'd be a little clump on this side left. Everything single tree strip looked like winter, but it's a it's a live oak forest, right? And all of all of the both sides, the telephone poles bent this way. Now look at the leaves on this tree. There's leaves on that, around the blessed. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean <laughs> look, look around. You can't see. This is a crate, you know what I'm saying? This is a crate myrtle with most of the leaves yeah. off of it. Yeah. And and those leaves somehow somehow that. There's the blessed Virgin Mary in her green <laughs> with no damage. That's, but that that's one of them, but there's another yeah. one here in a minute that I want to show you. That's a picture I put up on Facebook prior to the event. All right, well, this, we actually didn't see that. Okay, well, that, 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 that. All right, so, so we're in the, the neighborhood now, and this is Harry and David unloading stuff. Um, and the, the probably the, uh, what was her name? The, uh, the Donna. 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 She's probably up in the truck driving right. stuff. Uh, there's Larry's son. Right. He right. got involved. Brian right. got involved. But this is... This is after we did something really fun here, which we're going to show you. Larry's a, a great driver, and and, <laughs> and Rick is great at giving instructions. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, well, first let's look at the neighborhood. So this is the neighborhood, most of the neighborhood, not all of it, but just some different pictures of damage around here and there. You can see a lot of damage. Again, mostly wind damage. Some water damage. There's all kinds of standing water everywhere, and that's where all the trees. It's summer in Corpus. 
What, so it's supposed to be all green. One of the season. houses I walked up to, I asked the guy, is there anything you need? And first off, you walk up to these people who, who that's what they're living in, you say, is there anything you need? And, oh, well, yeah, I could use a little water, maybe some trash bags, and mosquito repellent. And you start to give them stuff. Oh, you, you may need some for the guy down the street. Don't, I don't want to take it off. Wow. So they've still got, they still it's care giving, about them. So, yeah, 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 the giving mentality. They, the people that were the most effective were still wanting to give. It was every single one. Of that's how everybody was down there. There wasn't any division. There wasn't any all the crap that's going on in our country. I mean, it was all going. It was all just but, but seeing one, God. One guy in a wheelchair says, "Is there any way you can get me a, a porta potty?" A porta -pot. And of course, obviously, we didn't have one of those on the truck. The problem is they're all in septic tanks. The water level so high, septic tanks not working. We don't, in all our city conveniences, we don't think about how some of these people are living. Yeah. Alright, so this is another miracle. I don't even know if the other guys saw this, but this was this was a house that was, I wish I would have had a picture of the whole house, but there's a major damage. Trees were over at this particular house. Actually, David and Karen went up to the house to see if anybody was in there and see if they needed it. And I, on the way, when I went up there, I, I saw a statue of Mary in this rubble and just standing like nothing happened. And everything else around it is completely mangled. And that just doesn't happen. I mean, it, it was a beautiful statue. It's not a great picture here, but this was this was truly one of the miracles we saw. That should have been wiped out. But you can tell all the stuff around it. It was crazy. You guys remember seeing that? Yeah, I, I, I don't remember seeing that. Alright. I heard that. All right, so, so I, I, I'll let Larry tell the story. <laughs> I, I want to defend Larry. This is not Larry's fault. It's not Larry's fault. No, I just I don't know how to listen. If you ask my wife or Rick, they'll tell you that. So Rick told me to stop and I thought he said go. So there we go. But the cool part about it is that a couple of people later uh, came over uh, that were workmen. They just passed by. Yeah. We'll, we'll tell them that. But, okay. but, so what happened was, we're trying, to, talk about it. we're trying to unload stuff into this, to state a staging area for this neighborhood, because we're getting ready to leave, and we just wanted to offload a bunch of stuff. And Larry, and, and we all thought we could get in this driveway. I mean, it's not a big deal. And I was going to lead him there in. There were some that thought we could get in there, yes. <laughs> I, I was going to lead him in, and it just happened. We got in this ditch. So this, this truck is dug in the ground, big time. As you can see, the other thing is somehow he's not over on his side. I mean, this thing's going it's like this and like this, and 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 we have water in there, lots of water. Thank God we had water on the left side of the truck because that saved us, I think, because it, it was going over. So that the fact that it didn't go over is amazing. That that's a miracle in itself. But the other miracles are getting us out of here. So we're out in this little area with nobody around no where are we gonna get a tow truck number one that's big enough to get this out so so what we did was we thought you know what we'll just try to pull it out you know we're we're redneck Texans we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we should so, be a monster truck so, <laughs> this jeep this, this jeep why is that funny <laughs> <laughs> so this jeep who this guy who lives in this house had this jeep and he said, well, I'll try to pull it out. <laughs> try is the word here because he didn't pull it out. He was spinning. You guys have any anything to say on this? No. He no, was no. spinning <laughs> like crazy. He, he dug did. four ditches. Four yeah. holes. And Larry's punching it and it's not moving. It didn't budge. It was like, so we're on. We're La going. Larry's actually digging a deeper hole with his, with his right rear wheel as he's, as he's doing this. Yeah. Just let's go. So, <laughs> so, so so as he did that, this bumper goes down in that ground even further. So we're in this thing, you know, we're, we're out, and this is when the mosquitoes were that million times worse than you've ever seen. At, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 
these mos these mosquitoes are 24 seven. They're not. <laughs> they're not just you know dog and dog. <laughs> they're going by shifts. <laughs> I mean, if I wish we had pictures, if you could see all these mosquitoes all over the whole time. I mean, we were just doing this. Ask Larry how many times we slapped things off the top of his head. I kept laughing, Rick, because he'd be telling me something, there'd be a mosquito land on him, then another one, and then another one. <laughs> I can't talk to you. So, so this guy in this truck shows up right when all this is happening. And his name was St. John, or I don't know what his name was. <laughs> and he's very humble, and he came up, and he, and he, he said, I can pull this out from the back. And I'm looking at him. Yeah, I didn't think it was possible. And so, so he hooked the same. He had a strap or something. He, the, the fact that he was in the neighborhood at all is incredible. And the fact that this truck could pull this out is incredible. He did pull it out easily, actually. I mean, it, there was a, some more fireworks going on as we were doing it, but it worked. <laughs> 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 no, we don't. I, I thought I wanted to forget as much as that. So we got it out. And, and yeah, this, that's a good picture. Yeah, so we pulled us out. We pulled it out. We got out and we went to Catholic Charities. So that's what our next thing is. This is, I'm not sure her name, but she was. It's Linda. She's the coordinator for Catholic Charities down there. She's talking about all the different counties affected and all the different places they're going to go. So. The thing is, though, they wouldn't answer the phone, so we didn't know if they were open. The only reason we knew they were, we got a hold of them was because we got a hold of the priest that was next door to us where we stayed, by half So we, we, we got there, we, we started unloading our truck. Now, these are a couple sisters from St. Therese, uh, yeah. Teresa of Calcutta, okay? These are the, these are the nuns. So we, we got there, and the Catholic Charities is a little, you don't just go in and pick up stuff and leave. You have to sign things and all this thing so before we unloaded anything I saw these nuns walking in and they needed supplies and I said sister look in our truck and see what you need and get what you need before we unloaded the Catholic Charities and because we, we can get you in and out they were going to help the sisters of Sheriff's what, what, what one of these you have to understand at this point is is that there were three of us that the plan was we were coming back Saturday night and I guess we made it <laughs> midnight is still Saturday night but we were coming back Saturday, and we were trying to figure out while we were in Catholic Charities in Corpus, how we're gonna make this two hour drive back over to the sisters, because we wanna drop some more stuff off to them, right? and then get back on the road. It's gonna be a three hour, four hour detour when, they, when these nuns show up. And they tell you they're gonna go where? Yeah. For sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, what are the odds of that right. happening? Like, how do we- That's what we're heading. Okay. How do we do things? So anyway, we. We, we loaded them up. We also loaded them up with gas in their van. <laughs> David thought they needed some gas because there are all these places yeah. are on generator. So they asked for gas. We gave them gas. And I'm thinking, if we kill these nuns with the gas, <laughs> we're never going to get out of purgatory. I mean, it's going to be bad. So I, I asked, I told Sister Rose, I said, Sister, you have to have your windows down. You cannot go with that gas with the windows up. We'll be okay, we'll be good. God will provide, don't worry. She we'll said, sister, you gotta have those windows down. So she had it down like this much. I said, sister, all the way down. If your habits fly out, that's what happens. You gotta do it. So that's the kind of conversation we have with these great nuns. And they knew uh, Mother Teresa uh, when they were obviously much younger, but, but very, very cool nuns. And they got stuff. And then this is a crew at the end of our unloading at Catholic Charities, they had about 40, 50 young people volunteering to, to unload these trucks all day long. Yep. Yep. Some of those, those kids wore me out. Because <laughs> um, we, we helped unload the 18 wheeler, they helped unload our truck, and they stayed with us you they know, didn't step stop. by step. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, our backs are dying from the water bottles. I still haven't recovered from it, but and these kids are just going like crazy. And if you've, if you've ever been inside of a, a closed cab truck to 
the sun beating down on it, um, it was hot. Yeah. And then there's Larry with the empty truck afterwards. Just wanted it empty. Yeah. <laughs> and it and was still drivable and everything. So we're <laughs> good. <show. laughs> <laughs> so again, the, the mission was accomplished for this trip, but it there's still much more that needs to be done down there. It, all the, you know, all your donations, all that stuff, they still need a lot of help down there. It, and we went just to one area. Houston's all messed up as well. So do not forget to, to keep them in your prayers and support them. So because you're going to need it. Larry sure. might have some other stuff. Drop the truck off. And I couldn't make it back home unless my beautiful bride drove down there with another truckload of stuff for Sean Stott. So do you want to tell the story about giving the money away, the last house, the last little bit of money we had? Yeah, so um, I came down on Saturday and he said that he needed to get, he said, you need to, he sent the message out that he needed a um, bug spray. Well, I was already in Austin by then. And so I had, actually, let me back up. Because I'm, I'm on the, on Friday night, when you called and said that you were at the Schoenstatt sister's house, I'm like, okay, well, I know that our cousin Julianne donates and is, goes, sends her daughter to the retreats and uh, the LeBlancs and uh, the Fergusons. So different families we knew were um, always involved with the Schoenstatts. And so I uh, texted them and said, hey, Larry's down there do you guys want to you know help out or I think they need some stuff do you want to meet me and so they said yes let's meet at the Home Depot at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning and we'll get you some supplies Giselle Ferguson sent an email to all her show and stop sisters and families that support them and I show up with this in a, it's a Chevy Chevy big flatbed truck yeah. And um, it's a big truck. It was a big truck for me to drive, but I got it down there. So, um, but we, I show up at eight o'clock on Saturday morning, and they just filled that flatbed with paper towels, toilet paper, cleaning supplies. I mean, just a, a, a non-perishable stuff to restock because the sisters had the message that Larry had passed on was the sisters dorm was damaged they're in small quarters they need to and they brought in the neighborhood families that needed shelter so their pantry was depleted so they need supplies and so they got word out again a simple phone call and then the Holy Spirit just makes it happen um, then he says that they need bug spray I'm halfway down I'm on my way and I had to stop at Target in Round Walk anyway and I called the manager and I was like, listen, I'm on my way down and these folks need bug spray. Well, she gathered all the discounted cans that she had on her shelf, 20 cans of bug spray is what I took down. And some one of the families had slipped a $50 bill on my uh, in the truck. And I was like, well, I don't want to use this for me. So I just took it into Target. I was like, whatever, $50, yeah. Forty-seven dollars for the bug spray. <laughs> like, That's okay, thanks. <laughs> it was not enough. It was not enough bug spray because, but, I uh, and then you know he had told me the night before they need extension cords, so I went to Home Depot, and I mean it really is amazing when you have um, when you just really let faith and grace in your life and and guide you. And trust you because I helped a lot with the Katrina and Hurricane Rita victims and I and I needed to really forgive that experience and get past that experience because um, it, it was a different kind of help this time and when we he still had he said we're not leaving until we get rid of everything that was donated and on Monday we go up to these homes in Fulton, and then we go back to Crosswinds, Trade Winds. And I'm looking at these homes, and I'm like, surely these people don't live here. Surely not. 
The whole side of the house is missing. A whole picture window. The big picture window that we enjoy in front of our living rooms and look out and see a beautiful whatever garden or whatever. Just crashed. Just cracked and broken. Broken pieces still in this woman's house. And, and then this family. The family had little girls and they were just playing in the debris. Still. And this life goes on life goes on and Larry's like we have we still have five hundred dollars and we would donate and just said what do you need I said do you need cash or do you need the, the gift cards and they would hug him and they would hug him and say thank you and start crying because of the giving hearts that he represented for all of you and I'm so proud of Larry and and answering that call and I, I would challenge you guys that if it's on your heart and all of you did you answered that call when it's on your heart it's God's way of saying go on it's his kick in your ass you know that's what that is do it and serve and continue to be the servants and of God that, that you are right thank you for answering that call thanks for all thank you Kim. questions I'll stick around I got some other videos that I put on Facebook there were live videos of some of the damage if you want to see it but uh, I appreciate you staying around I know we ran a little bit long uh, yeah we, we do have further relief through the parish is that what this is this is last week's bulletin there's still opportunities to help so uh, uh, yeah we, we can answer questions you want questions we can we can answer questions yeah. Just real quick, I did, I did have um, first-hand experience going down there. Uh, they, it's clean-up time. So they need, if you guys have got some chainsaw just sitting around, uh, 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 fuel mix, um, gas, um, whatever that you can provide, uh, the totes, the, uh, the trash bags, those are the, no, the most needed now over there. It is. And then um, now it's like, um, if, you got, if you can only stay local, all my brothers from the National Guards are now moving to um, Florida. Florida. Yeah. So now it's like we're getting, I'm just after another. So I just got a message right now that I may be going to us, to K Billy right. Hutchins. Awesome. So all the folks at this local, those folks in K Billy Hutchins need help. Not necessarily donations, but they still need some help over there. Let's close, let's close, close the prayer, prayer and we can answer some questions afterwards. Close your prayer. You want to close Volunteer you or would you like me? I guess I could pray. We're gonna volunteer. Well, thank you for being here. So we'll uh in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Very 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 God, we thank you for these men and women of God. We ask you to continue to bless us, our very family, uh, that we may uh, offer the help that we need to do for these people who are uh, suffering from the the hurricane. We ask you to be with us in all things, to give us generous hearts and give us the means to be able to uh, continue to help. We ask this blessing in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our brother, and our Savior. Amen. 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 Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.